Hi all, I am Gaurav. Welcome to Introduction to Scala. I am starting this series with an intent of sharing my Scala knowledge. Hi and welcome to this discussion on Scala. Up until now, we have learned a lot of concepts on Scala. Probably this is the right time to revisit few of our concepts that we have learned in the past few weeks. In this video, we will try and solve a problem to go through our concepts once again. The video will cover below topics. Classes, constructor and auxiliary constructors. Objects and companion objects. Val, var, method, method overloading. Two-string method. Loop and if-else conditions. In this video, I will first describe the problem statement and then I will proceed with the solution. I would highly recommend you guys to pause the video and try out your own solution before you proceed with the solution in video. In Scala, we have observed that there is no functionality to handle fractions. Either you can use integers or you can use decimal. So our problem statement is to introduce fractions in Scala. So define a new class fraction that must be able to represent fractions in Scala. The class should take an input parameter as numerator and denominator. This class must be able to perform basic operations on fractions such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, comparison, and mix, max and min operation. This is a problem statement. This problem statement can be further divided into many tasks. However, feel free to pause the video here and try to implement the whole solution by yourself. But if you need any further hints, stay with me, where I will try to break this problem statement into further smaller tasks. Then you can pause this video to implement these smaller tasks to arrive at the overall solution. Again, we would be getting our hands dirty and would be doing a lot of coding practice. So I will use both text editor as well as Scala shell or REPL. So the first task is to, is to define the class that can accept a numerator and a denominator to form the fraction. Let us code our first class. I will declare a fraction class that can accept two integers as n and d. Let us fetch this code into Scala shell and we are successfully able to create an instance of fraction. But here we cannot see what fractions we have created or what is the numerator or denominator of our fraction instance. Let us put a print command inside our fraction class to print what fraction instance has been created. Let us fetch our code back into Scala shell. And again, we have created an instance of fraction. Even though now we know what fraction has been created, but this is still not ideal. The best way to know what is inside our fraction class is to override two string method. So our next task is to override the string method in fraction class. I will get rid of the print statement and replace it with two string method. Let us move back to Scala shell and fetch our code again. Let's inst instantiate the fraction class again. And now Scala has clearly informed us about the contents of fraction instance. So we have successfully created fractions, but we do not have any validation on fraction class. Anybody can create an invalid fraction. So our next task is to validate fraction. So let's do it. Right, so I'm, I'm going to use require. So this is a keyword that, that would validate the required parameter. You can pass it what is required and then it will do the validation on that parameter. So here we require that denominator should not be equal to zero. Let's bring that bring our latest code into Scala Ripple. And let's try to create again our new fraction class with denominator as zero. 
and now Scala will throw an error as illegal argument exception. The requirement fail. Now let us try to modify our denominator as some valid input. And yes, we have created again successfully created a instance of fraction. Right. I, I do not like the uh, solution that we have provided now. There are two problems with the solution. First is that I'm introducing a validation in my class, which is not exactly the behavior of the class. The behavior of the class is to deal with uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division of fractions. But here we are doing some validation as well. And second is that if you have if you see a pre-built class, say for example, big decimal, I can declare big decimal as big decimal and pass in the argument. But in fraction, we have to every time append it with new operator. So to resolve these above two problems, we'll try to utilize the companion object so that we can separate the creation of instance of class from the behavior of class. So let's move on to our next task, which is implementing the companion object. I will declare an object within the same class, underneath the same class as fraction, and I'll move the require condition from class to the apply method of this fraction object. Then once validated, uh, I will return the new instance of the fraction class. Let's move on to the Scala. Let's bring our code into the Scala shell and then, and then try to instantiate our new fraction without using new operator. Right, here we go. Right, but then there is still a problem here. Anybody can still go ahead and use the new keyword to use the class. Now it is even more dangerous. We do not have the validation in the class as in the class, and then anybody can create an invalid fraction here. So our next next task is to prevent this operation. So in order to prevent this operation, we have to make the class constructor as private. This is pretty easy in Scala. We would just go and then append it with private just after the name of the class. Let's try to bring in our code back again into uh, the Scala shell. And let's try to create again new fraction, the fraction instance with new keyword. And Scala would tell us that it cannot create it cannot create uh, the fraction instance with new keyword. However, it will still allow us to use um, fraction to create the new instance. So far, so good. Now let us try to create a fraction with numerator and denominator that has a common divisor. Scala has created a fraction instance without removing the common divisor from numerator and denominator. So this is not what we want. Um, so our next task is to find out the greatest common divisor or GCD from numerator and denominator. So let us code a private GCD method in our fraction object. So this, this GCD method would take in two arguments, numerator and denominator, and then we'll try to find out the least between the numerator and denominator. We'll create a variable with, with name GCD and we'll assign it to one. So in case we are not able to find out any GCD between numerator and denominator, we are going to default it as one. We'll write a for loop that loop from one until the least number until the least of numerator and denominator and then until then we'll try to divide every number from one until least with numerator and denominator and we're trying to find out the greatest value that has divided both numerator and denominator and then we'll return the same value Once we have determined our GCD, we'll, we'll divide both our incoming numerator and denominator with this 
in GCD uh, to form our fraction. In order to uh, keep it keep the clean code, I will rename the fraction class input parameters as n numer and denom, and keep the object uh, inputs as n and d. Let's bring our code back again into the Scala shell. And we'll try to again create a fraction with common divisor. Let's create a fraction with 4 and 6. And yes, now Scala has given us a fraction by removing common divisor.